Good morning, everyone. On Sunday, April 18th, this is the third Sunday in Easter this year, and we have a scripture reading that encompasses part of the 24th chapter of the book of Luke. I want you to think on that chapter of the Bible for just a few minutes. Chapter 24 is the final chapter of Luke, and it is the entirety of Luke's account of the post-resurrection Jesus. Of course, we know that the same author who wrote the Gospel of Luke continued his story into the book of Acts, and so some of the events that he quickly told in the 24th chapter of Luke, he expands upon in the early chapters of the book of Acts. But for now, I want you to look at the 24th chapter of Acts as a concise account of those things that took place after Jesus rose from the dead. Of course, the 24th chapter starts with the, the story of the women going to the tomb very early on the, the morning. And when they arrived, they found the stone rolled away. Jesus was not in the tomb. They saw two men in shining garments, which we assume were angels, who told them that he was risen. They left without seeing Jesus, though, according to Luke, went back to, to the disciples and told them what they had seen. Some of the men then went to the tomb and also observed the same thing. But it doesn't say directly that anyone had seen Jesus up to that point. Then, later in the day, two followers of Jesus walking along the, the road from Jerusalem to Emmaus, a seven-mile stretch of road, were joined in their journey by a stranger. And as they were talking about the events of the past few days in Jerusalem, the stranger asked them to tell them what they were talking about. And of course, they related to, to him the entire story of Jesus as a teacher, a prophet, a miracle worker who had been crucified and buried. And now they said there were rumors that he had actually risen from the dead. And then the stranger began to talk to them to explain things to the scripture, uh, to them from the scripture that they themselves had not understood to that point. And they were so impressed with him in spite of not knowing who he was that they asked him to come into their home when they arrived at Emmaus and to share a meal. And of course, it was when he began to break bread that somehow they realized that this was Jesus in their presence. And as soon as they recognized him, he vanished. And then they immediately got up and rushed back to Jerusalem to see the eleven and the others who were gathered there and to tell them how they had encountered Jesus. And they learned of the story of the others, even that uh, Jesus had appeared to Simon. But uh, as they were all in the room just telling their stories, we uh, pick up the reading of chapter 24 in verse 36. It says, Now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit and he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still, not be but while they still did not believe for joy, and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, 
that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And so here at the climax of chapter 24, we have many followers of Jesus, including the 11 remaining disciples, gathered in a room, joined by those two from Emmaus, and everyone is excitedly telling stories about Jesus, about how Jesus has been seen, how Jesus is apparently risen from the dead. And yet when Jesus appears in their very midst, is it not curious that they did not realize or could not make themselves believe that it really was Jesus? They thought it was a ghost. And then Jesus showed them his hands and his feet, presumably the wounds in his hands and feet. And he said, it's really me. And they looked at it. And a, and a strange passage here uh, in verse 41, it says, but will they still did not, but while they still did not believe for joy and marveled. I'm not really sure what that means. It, it seems to be saying they were happy, but they still could not make themselves believe that this really was Jesus. And he went so far as to ask for some food and to eat it right there in front of them, so as to prove to them that he was not just a ghost or a spirit, that it was not just their imagination. But I think the amazing thing about the stories in Luke chapter 24 is how much difficulty the close disciples and followers had of recognizing Jesus in his post-resurrection appearances. It just seems that someone that you had been with every day for three years or more, someone who had been your teacher, your counselor, your guide, the person that you had placed all your faith and hopes in, you would know so well that when that person appeared to you, you would recognize him. And yet, they did not. I think that we may have a bit of a romanticized picture of the resurrection of Jesus. Maybe something that comes from the way it may have been portrayed in some of the movies. Um, we see Jesus going to the cross and receiving this cruel treatment on the way to the cross, the uh, beating, the crown of thorns, the puncture wounds, the sword thrust into his side, the flaying of flesh from his back. And all of this was done. Um, these things were, were terribly destructive to his physical body and to his appearance. And yet, in the movies, we see him laid in the tomb, and then on Easter Sunday morning, he springs from the tomb just thoroughly renewed, uh, as if he has just been to a health spa. You know, he suddenly just looks better than anybody has ever looked. Uh, he still has the wounds in his hands and his feet, and in his side, according to another gospel account, but we assume that he looks pretty good. But why did the disciples then not know him? I think that it must be telling us that in some profound way, Jesus was very changed after the resurrection. No doubt he looked different from a physical standpoint due to all of this injury that had occurred to his physical body, but also perhaps he was different even in his attitude, his uh, personality, 
something about him was very different because something profound had happened. Something profound had changed his very essence. And maybe it was the very essence of Jesus that they had a hard time coming to terms with. So I can't tell you what it is about Jesus that we must come to recognize and understand and accept in his post-resurrection existence, but I am saying that there is something different about Jesus that we need to seek out and come to believe and accept. Not just the Christ who walked on earth for three years as a, uh, a rather pleasant and enjoyable fellow. You know, the uh, Pharisees condemned Jesus and his followers for being uh, folks who ate and drank and seemed to enjoy life. And that was one way that they experienced Jesus. But in this post-resurrection time, they experienced Jesus as a serious guy with all of that stripped away. And perhaps we need to look as deeply as we can into the scriptures and into our concept of Jesus and see who that essence of Jesus really is. David Fox has prepared a song for us, and I was delighted when he told me what song he wanted to sing today. And uh, as you listen to this, this song has something to say about who Jesus is. And maybe in listening to this and worshiping along with this song, we will be able to begin that journey into understanding more fully who Jesus is to us. Thank you, and God bless.